St. Paul's Basilica, with its impressive Byzantine structure, is the biggest patriarchal basilica in Rome after St. Peter's in the Vatican. St. Paul was beheaded in Rome under Nero between 65 and 67 AD. The Basilica of St. Paul outside the walls lies where Timotheus, a disciple of the saint, buried his remains. Shortly after the martyrdom of St. Paul, his buried place became a place of pilgrimage and worship. Here, they built a memorial where pilgrims would go to pray during the centuries of the persecution. It was later on the Emperor Constantine who ordered the building of the Basilica on St. Paul's burial place. The Basilica was inaugurated in 324 AD in a much smaller size than the modern one. Over the centuries, the popes never stopped restoring and adding frescoes, mosaics, paintings and chapels to it. The Basilica today is a result of profound restoration works in 1823, a ferocious fire destroyed most of the old basilica. The new church was consecrated in 1854 during the pontificate of Pio IX. Only the transept, the Arch of Triumph, part of the old facade and the cloister from the ancient and glorious structure remained intact. To enter the church, you need to walk across a courtyard where a tall statue of St. Paul stands in the middle, welcoming the faithful and pilgrims. Beautiful mosaics decorate the facade. They depict the four prophets, Jesus Christ between St. Peter and St. Paul, and twelve lambs symbolizing the twelve apostles. There are three main doors. The one on the right-hand side is the holy door built for the Jubilee of the year 2000. The Basilica is a fantastic collaboration of majesty and art. Inside, you will see stunning mosaics and fine decoration alongside the central tomb of St. Paul. Among the beautiful examples of Byzantine art is the internal part of the Holy Door. In the 13th century, more artwork decorated the Basilica. An impressive art masterpiece inside the Basilica is the Ciborium, the 13th century tabernacle by Arnolfo di Cambio. This beautiful tabernacle lies on four porphyry pillars with golden capitals on top. A white marble balustrade surrounds the altar, while a yellow marble and bronze staircase leads to the tomb of St. Paul. The church is particularly famous for the portraits of the popes on top, all around the main nave. The portrait of the current pope is illuminated. It is in this basilica that every year, on the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul, 25th of January, the Week of Christian Prayer for Christian Unity solemnly opens. The Pope has specified two privileged tasks for this papal basilica, the Sacrament of Reconciliation and the Development and Organization of Ecumenical Initiatives. On the 28th of June, 2008, Pope Benedict XVI visited the Basilica and announced that the following year would be designated the Pauline year to commemorate the bimillennium of the birth of St. Paul. Thus, the Pauline year was run from 28th of June 2008 to 29th of June 2009. You know what my way of life has been ever since the first day I set foot among you in Asia how I have served the Lord with all humility, with all the sorrows and trials that came to me through the plots of the Jews. I have not hesitated to do anything that would be helpful to you. I have preached to you and instructed you both in public and in your homes, urging both Jews and Greeks to turn to God and to believe in our Lord Jesus. And now you see me on my way to Jerusalem in captivity to the Spirit. I have no idea what will happen to me there except that the Holy Spirit, in town after town, has made it clear to me that imprisonment and persecution await me. But I do not place any value on my own life, provided that I complete the mission the Lord Jesus gave me, to bear witness to the good news of God's grace. I now feel sure that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will ever see my face again. And so on this very day, 
I swear that my conscience is clear as far as all of you are concerned, for I have without faltering put before you the whole of God's purpose. Defend your church, O Lord, by the protection of the holy apostles, that as she received from them the beginnings of her knowledge of things divine, so through them she may receive, even to the end of the world, an increase in heavenly grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it beneficial, remember to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and also to hit the bell button in order to receive notification whenever a new video is uploaded onto this channel. Do also check out our online catalogue by clicking on the link in the description below.